Hello everybody and welcome back to Forever Conscious Research Channel. Hope you're doing well today. Just bear with me one moment. Going to do an audio check. Just take one second here. Okay, looks like we're good. So, hope you're all doing well tonight. And um, so, I was writing up my, <clears throat> excuse me, my own views on karma and sinning, okay? And I've had uh, a book titled Truth Beyond the Earthly Matrix, Understanding the Earthly Programs of Limitations and Controls by Ronald R. Fellian, DD. Um, I read through this. Oh, I'm getting a little feedback. I read through this, I don't know, a few months ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I thought he really did a great job in this particular section. Um... Like everyone you'll run across, you're not going to agree with everything that, and if, and there's just, there's no way you're going to agree with everyone that you run across. It just doesn't work that way. So, um, I do suggest the book, but there are other ones too, I would suggest as well, which I will do a separate video on in the near future, um, referencing other source material that I find valuable while hunting and trying to figure out the uh, Matrix Reincarnation Soul Trap. Excuse me, my throat's a little... So, um, I want to start off with his first paragraph, and then I'm going to skip to the concept of sin because, and then I'll go to karma, because I know I have, I know there's a decent chunk of Christians that come by my channel, and um, I feel that his, you know, even though this whole chapter is excellent, I also, I think Christians in particular, the few that are out there, will find this of value. And then, like I said, we'll do we'll do sin, and then we'll do karma, and uh, I'll also read his opinion on it. It's only about five or six pages, but it's uh, I really um, I, I this chapter is just excellent. So he starts off by saying it's chapter two, page six. Sin and karma, matrix traps for fear and guilt. Sin and karma are two concept beliefs that rule the religious world in one form or another and are known of and or understood by pretty much everyone on this planet. But are they real? Do they exist beyond this dream world and why were these concepts put into place? Well, we all know why they were put into place, right guys? <laughs> all right, so the concept of sin. The concept of sin claims everyone is born into sin because of the first humans and that as long as you are in human form, you will always be a sinner no matter what you might do or believe. There is only one way to move beyond sin and that kicks in only after you die. How convenient, right? It's the idea that you have to make a choice. You can accept and follow, become a slave servant for a, a savior God, which allows you to move to heaven after you die or reject that savior and be doomed to an eternal hell. Meaning you will either spend eternity in fiery torment or in heaven where all is good and you get to spend forever worshiping, giving energy to and being a slave of another being. 
In Revelation 20, I noticed the burning and eternal hell concepts seem to get canceled. The Bible says that after the second coming of Christ and Satan is defeated, he will be locked up for a thousand years and then be released. Once he's released, he will continue to be the bad guy. So God will finally destroy him and earth. Since Satan is in charge of hell, if God destroys him, wouldn't that mean hell and all the souls there would be destroyed along with Satan? <laughs> it wouldn't make much sense if the God that preaches forgiveness decides to destroy Satan. Also, his creation and the one who supposedly corrupted man of... Oh, I'm sorry. Um... It wouldn't make much sense if the God that preaches forgiveness decides to destroy Satan, also his creation, and the only one who supposedly corrupted man in the first place, and is behind all the evil of this world, and left man to live in hell forever. Who would he have running hell with if Satan was gone? It's claimed that man has the choice to accept God's son and be saved or not accept him and go to hell. We all know that, right? We've all seen this one a thousand times. I lived it as a child briefly. Very briefly. Okay. It's claimed this decision is up to us and no one else. If you really think about it, you will realize that since man is born a sinner... He is already condemned to hell, so his only choice is to do what God wants or burn forever. Okay, so my Christian brothers and sisters out there, I'm going to read that again. It's claimed this decision is up to us and no one else. If you really think about it, you will realize that since man is born a sinner... He is already condemned to hell, so his only choice is to do what God wants or burn forever. He isn't picking hell. He is already going there. You're predestined. When you read the Bible, you will find that this God is supposed to know all, that everything is done according to his plan, and that nothing can happen that isn't his will. If this is true, then he already knew what Satan was, is going to do, and what he will do with Satan at the end. This should tell you that God has already decided and knows what is going to happen to each human. And that's from the Book of Life. Before they ever get to earth, and that he controls everything that happens to them while here. If this is true then man has no choice about going to heaven or hell, which means this loving, forgiving God is allowing man to be created, knowing full well that many of them will not accept his son and end up burning forever in hell. God would have known that when he created Satan, he would turn against him, and humans in the Garden of Eden would do what Satan wanted. It means that God knew and that it was his will that man would fall into the trap of sin, which is also his creation. Notice the circle. One of the interesting things about the concept of sin is that we are still held accountable for what someone did several thousand years ago. This is from by, by a God that is supposed to be loving and forgiving. Exactly. I love that. Love it. Love that paragraph because it's just it just cuts right to the chase of the matter, you know? He commands his followers to be forgiving, to turn the other cheek, yet he can't seem to do this for those he created, calls his children, and even sent his son to die for. Everyone is supposed to be beholden to his son for taking away our sin, yet everybody is still being born as a sinner. How about that? So I fail to see where his death did anything for us that in the past killing a goat and giving some to this God had done. Another point about sin is that two Christians cleaned and washed in the blood of the lamb, remember Jesus died in their place, can get married and have children, 
that are still sinners. This is like two pure blood German shepherds mating and having poodles as puppies. <laughs> if Jesus was with his father before he came to earth in human form, knew that death was an illusion, and that after his physical body was killed, he would go and be with his father, then what was his sacrifice? Then there is the concept of the word eternal. To be eternal, something would have to always have been and always will be, just like everyone here is. How can someone give you eternal life when the only way to eternal to be eternal is to already be eternal? It's a heck of a sell job to convince people someone can give sell them something they already have, which is eternal life. Another point they make uh, is if you don't accept Jesus as your savior, you will burn in hell forever. How can that happen if you weren't already eternal? You should ask yourself, why would a God who knows all, created everything, including the angels and demons, good, bad, sin, karma, salvation, reincarnation, and heaven and hell, create a conflict like this? Remember, he made all the rules and has total control over how both sides play the game and then tells us it's our fault. We have a bad life here and we are going to hell. I have to question why would we want to go back to a being that was willing to create us and stick us here to suffer and then tell us if we don't follow his rules, we can't go home and we'll suffer forever. What's to say this God wouldn't send us to another world to suffer once we reach heaven? Boom. Right? Okay. So now I'm going to rewind. I'm going out of order on purpose because I really think that if my Christian brothers and sisters who are listening, the one, and I know there's a, there's a, not a lot, but there's a decent chunk of you out there who are on the fence with this stuff. I want to try and win you over. I really do. And I and if that doesn't, then I don't know what will. Um, uh, there are Christians who talk to me about near-death experiences, but I find when I start talking to them, they're telling me that they're looking into Christian near-death experience, Jesus, this and that, you know, all these cookie-cutter near-death experience. They're not going outside of... In looking at the the to, you know the the total, uh, you know um, petri dish of options. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, I don't know. I just couldn't find a word at the moment. That was the one I found. Anyways, okay. So the concept of karma. What does sin and karma mean to people on Earth? Karma is the idea that how you live your life determines whether you will get rewards or punishments in this life and the next. If you do well, you will get blood back. And if you do bad, things you get bad things back. You get bad things back. Kind of like stacking up markers and someone is keeping score on a chalkboard to see if you balance out. It's only when you finally balance out that you can move on to another world level. One of the problems with karma is it's thought of known as a karmic circle, like the saying that comes around, goes around. The phrases karmic circle, circle of life, and what comes around, goes around, are phrases that most everyone has heard of. These sayings, ideas, have become accepted as truth or possible truths and are part of the default programming on this world. Right on. Because these sayings have been accepted and repeated many times, they influence the way people think, view life on this world, and the afterlife. It's been programmed into the brain as a possibility or belief which affects every area of our lives. It also affects the number of times we incarnate and how long we are trapped in this dream world. Boom, drop the mic. 
Because if you're stuck in the karma and sinner deception of this place, you're done. You're done. I don't, I don't even think you have, I think you're bordering on less than a 0.00001% of liberating yourself. I, I do. I don't, I don't think you can go through this existence and make it out on the other side and escape completely liberated with your sovereignty intact if you subscribe to this. And, and, I've, and I've told a, a number of people this who are listeners of the channel. Um, you have to, you have to get out of that paradigm. You have to be a good person for being a good person because that's what you, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. That's how you need to live your life. You do not need to worry about what's going to happen when you're a bag of bones. You're going to live on. You're going to live forever. But the question is, do you want to come back? Do you want to come back? I don't. And I know a lot of you don't. But the ones in the paradigms, if you're stuck in these paradigms with religion and you're not willing to open yourself up completely, you're done. That's the bottom line. You cannot take any of your trappings in this world when you die. Once you do that, if you have any of them, you're done. That's the hard truth of all of this information. It's that, um, and I know I'm, I'm kind of going off from, from the reading, but it's, it's a really important thing. Like right now, I, I, you know, I love nature. I love enjoying, I love filming it, I love walking in it, I love embracing myself in it, okay? But... I know that it, you know, it, it, if when I die, because I don't have these religious fixations, there I'll probably have something like nature thrown at me. I'll probably have something like my dog, my dogs thrown at me, um, and of course loved ones. They're gonna they roll out the red carpet for all of us, and all it takes is one. All it takes is one. So remember, you can enjoy what's going on in your life right now. You can enjoy everything that's around you, but be prepared to shed it all at a moment's notice once you're crossing over. And most of us have the luxury of having an inner knowing when we die. Do you know that it's, it's roughly between 80 and 90%, I think I've brought this up before, of, of people who are, um, who they know they're going to die. Okay. There are, you know, and there's tons of premonitions about even people who die in accidents talking about, oh, well, you know, I, I you know, I can't believe I'm going to die here next week, or I can't believe I'm going to die here soon. Or do you know, I'm, you know, they say something really weird and cryptic and the family member or whoever they're next to catches on to it. And then it happens. OK, and the same thing happens with us, um, with 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 just a, a standard death. We start to realize that our body is breaking down. We know something's wrong. We not be we might not be able to put our finger on it right away, but you will know you will know. So when you start getting that inner knowing brothers and sisters you better be shedding everything shed it all don't eat do not have any trappings to this world that can be used against you um and i did and like i did mention uh in the last few previous videos i am working on a video it's probably going to be a long one it's going to be in depth it's going to be about how um what i plan to do personally for my exit plan so um, I don't know when I'm going to get it out there because I really want to do it right. And I, and, and I want you all to have your plan in place 
I mean, just whatever I put out there is, is my plan, but I want you to have your plan. You need to be thinking about this stuff. It, it, it's, you know, and this isn't cryptic stuff. This is about your freaking sovereignty. This is no game. This is not a game, okay? And I'm not trying to strike fear in anyone listening to you here. But what I am trying to say is that you better start working on something. That's all. It doesn't have to be a massive thing that you're doing all in one day. It could take weeks. It could take months. But start to develop a plan. Meditate on it. Send this message out there that you are going to be sovereign and not allow anything or anyone to come in your way between your sovereignty. That's all. Okay, so I'm sorry for the rant, <laughs> but, you know, uh, I think we, you know, we really need uh, pep talks, you know, it, it, we, this is where, this is serious, serious matter, and I'm just trying to, this is, part of me doing this is, is for me, too, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that the message comes clear to some of you out there, but it's it's also a big part of my journey. This whole channel's been about um, just kind of documenting my evolution through all of this, and I've been invested in this material for close to five years now. So, um, and it only builds. I it, the knowing inside of me grows and grows and grows with each passing day. I've seen nothing. No bit of information that could come to me and change my mind at this point. Nothing. There's nothing anyone could say, do, that will change my mind. What's going on here is a matrix, matrix reincarnation soul trap. Hands down, guaranteed, no doubt about it. The fine details are different, but it's happening. Okay, so let's move on. Sorry for the rant again, but... Let's go. That's right. I do not consent. Withdraw all soul contracts. Right on, Jimmy. That's right. Okay. All right. So uh, I may re be repeating one paragraph here, and I apologize if I do, but let's just uh, start it off where we're at, you know, where I think I'm at. Remember from chapter one, the words we use to describe things have meaning, and the term karmic circle is no different. Every word used by religions and developed for this world has done to keep the default programming in place and enforces it through the accepted meanings in of worlds. Let's look at the word circle and how something becomes defined as a circle. A circle is a line where any point on the line is an equal distance from the center and the circle line is unbroken. If the line is unbroken, which it has to be in order to be a circle, it means you have no way of getting out without breaking the circle. If what you do or have done in your past life leads to what happens to you tomorrow, and what you do in this life leads to what happens to you in the next life, there is no way to break the circle because the past determines the future and you can't change the past. It's a perpetual cycle. That's why, you know, like if you look at the top of the video here, the karma and sinner deception, life after life of guilt and shame. This is what it, this is what it's about. Once you're sucked into this, you're done. You might as well just kiss this lifetime goodbye. You're coming back. This means if you believe you are stuck in the karmic circle, you will always be stuck and unable to leave, ever be unable to ever leave this that dream reality. The idea of being good enough in one life to allow you to escape the circle is a false hope promised to be delivered to its believers only after they die. This is just like the concept that you are always a sinner until after you die. It's amazing how quickly and how many people buy into the idea of giving now and getting rewarded only after they die. It's, it's like a chronic condition here on earth, it, it, that, that line of thinking. Let me repeat that. It's amazing how quickly and how many people buy into the idea of giving now and getting rewarded only after they die. 
It's the ego that wants to live on and accepts whatever hope it is given to accomplish that goal. Isn't it interesting that people believe the idea of getting rewarded after death, yet when they see a sign that says wet paint, they have to touch to see if it's true. I often ask people, if they cease to exist after death, they know it. Since, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. I often ask people if they cease to exist after death, would they know it? Since the answer has to be, no way they wouldn't know if they didn't exist after death, otherwise they would be still existing. I then ask why you would worry about something you wouldn't even know happened. Excellent question, isn't it? When we think in terms of our lives, experiences, here being a circle, we are trapping ourselves within this circle, meaning we can never grow beyond it. We can only move forward along the circle for so long until we are back at our starting point and have to repeat the same path we just completed, meaning we are going backwards rather than forwards in our growth. It's like driving round and round in a roundabout and wondering why you never get where you want to go. People think because they keep getting the same lessons over and over in their lives, meaning they think they haven't learned it yet, that they are trapped within this karmic circle. This way of thinking or believing will ensure they keep having those types of experiences over and over. It's only when you really look at the experiences individually that you will see that they are never actually the same, even though they appear so on the surface. Rather than thinking of your life as a circle, karmic or otherwise, thus trapping yourself, think of your life as a spiral. A spiral goes from starting point and wraps around its center, always moving outward, and more importantly, forward. The spirals can be very close together, which will allow incidents to be similar, yet not identical because they are on another wrap of the spiral. As you experience those lessons and gain greater growth, the spirals can become farther apart, allowing the lessons experiences to be very different. If you want to change your life, change how you think rather than thinking in terms of living in a circle and trapping yourself. Think in terms of living in a spiral and you will always be moving forward with no end to the amount of spirals and experiences you can have. And you can get off out at any time. You get off slash out at any time. So yeah, I think, I, I mean, I really think that this particular uh, chapter was excellent excellent um so just bear with me one moment i'm going to read one more paragraph i just don't want to cough in your face okay sorry about that okay cheers okay reasons for the karma sin trap you can trace the reason for these programs, sin, karma, religion, back to the concept that there are beings behind the scenes that live off the energy humans produce and need us to remain within the earthly matrix so they can survive. Um, recent videos, a number of videos, I've, I've spoke about Robert Monroe and uh, in his book, Far Journeys, he talks about Lush. We have the matrix referring to us as batteries. We can go on and on. This is not a concept that is solely uh, come to light out of one source. Um, it is clear as day to me that there has to be a level of truth to us being a form of energy emitter that something is feeding on. Everything feeds off of something here in this matrix this holographic realm that we live in right now. Why would we be any exception? They can continue to get this energy only by convincing us or fooling us to remain within their system. 
by creating the concept of religion, sin, karma, heaven and hell, and making these the default programs on this world, they have made us feel guilty and worthless over everything we think and do. This causes us to live in fear of what will happen to us here and after we die. It makes us, our ego mind, very willingly give our energy to another being we have been led to believe we need in order to leave this world for something better, a place we already were and still are. So yeah, it's 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 the guilt trip. It's the whole um, earth is a school. Earth is a school. It's all love and light here. Love and light. Everything's beautiful. But you got to go back here because you need to learn. You didn't learn your lesson. You naughty. No, see what I mean? It's ridiculous. It's 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 the whole thing is absurd. Ugh. I mean, honestly, I can rant on this shit forever. It's so absurd what's going on. Ugh. By creating religions based on guilt and fear, these beings are able to play both sides of the game using humans as its pawn and energy source. It's a win-win for them and a lose-lose for humans that accept sin or karma as truth and don't understand they say no, that they can say no to both concepts. Humans stay within the system because we believe we have to... I'm sorry. Humans stay within the system because we believe we have to and can't leave without the help from some being outside of us. That's, that's what's going on, right? In a nutshell. I believe that sin and karma are concepts that were designed to control the thoughts and behaviors of humans on this world, so we believe we have to keep coming back to this matrix. These ideas, concepts, make people feel guilty about doing or thinking about anything that is outside of the programs. We are given a standard for living the perfect life that we can't ever hope to achieve while being alive, so we are always going to feel less than or worthless and will fall short of what we are told we are supposed to be. Remember, everything's coming in the afterlife. You ever, it's, they're going to roll out the red carpet for you. They're gonna say, they're, the trumpets will be playing. Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad, they're all going to be rolling out the gates. Your family members, your dogs, they're all going to be waiting for you. And they're going to say, good job. Oh, oh, you, did, you did great. You did great. Good job. Oh, my God. You made it. But guess what? You, you, you kind of fucked up over there. You remember this? Remember this? Okay, we're gonna. This is what they. This is what they do. They they they'll put you. <laughs> it's such a sophisticated bunch of bullshit. What they do is they put you through the eyes of some person you hurt at some point in your life. Usually, some usually multiple people. Okay, but the ones that really stick out that. Um, that's really gonna crush you inside of you. So they'll take advantage of that. And then they're going to replay that experience, but you are going to be on the receiving end of it. Now talk about how sick that is, right? That's some sick shit. That's a manipulation if I've ever heard it. All right. So when you are told your thoughts can condemn you, what chance... I'm sorry. When you are told your thoughts can condemn you, what chance would you have without begging for help? It was done to create a fair worship relationship, which the creators of the system need to live. It's the fear of going to hell or suffering while here for something you did in a past life that you don't even remember. Doing that keeps many people willingly standing in the submission slave line. God, that's a great couple sentences right there. Don't follow the rules and you get punished. Follow the rules and you get rewarded. Isn't that the same thought pattern used by parents in our society to get kids and us to behave and do what others want of us? The concept is to focus now on making someone outside of you happy so you can be happy after you die rather than being happy now thus giving others the control and power over your life 
All the channeling, psychic readings, and past life regressions talk about how much love and caring is in the spirit world and how everyone is accepted for who they are, that there is no negativity or judgment of anyone or anything. This means there is no reward or punishment outside of what we create in our mind. This trap keeps mankind divided by making us think that anyone not living the way we are is wrong. It keeps people focused on wanting to keep a power outside of them happy and always worried they might do or say something wrong and get punished for it. It's known as the if we can just be good enough concept. There is no sin or karma except what we create in our mind and there is no punishment or reward. Enjoy each life for what it is and let others do the same. Get past the concept of feeling guilty or that you have to be punished and learn to love yourself and others. Once you do that, we can change how this world operates and more importantly, you will be able to leave this universe when your physical body dies without having to be reinserted in the timeline and deal with this shit all over again. Book drop. <laughs> right? I mean, really. I mean, that's a hell of a chapter. I mean, uh, I was writing it up and then I was like, oh, I remember reading that book and he had a hell of, you know, uh, Ronald had a great chapter on it. So shout out to him for an excellent excellent uh, uh, chapter there really good work um, so yeah I, I hope you like that um, so for those catching the replay right now uh, this is going to end the part of the you know the reading the kind of discussion and now I'm just going to kind of float on over to the chat um, so if you want to stick around and listen to the, the chat and we'll kind of have a brief interaction, maybe for about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll probably wrap it up. That's cool. I just got to bring the screen up here if I can get to it. Oops. What the hell? All right. There we go. Okay. All right. So I want to welcome everybody. And, uh, sorry, I haven't had a chance to check the chat until now, but I hope you're all doing well, and I'm happy to see a lot of familiar faces in here. I don't know why that's blocked off. Okay, of course it's blocked off. <laughs> all right, let me just rewind up here on my phone. 925. Okay. Live chat. So, I, what did you guys think about that uh, that chapter? It's good stuff, isn't it? I thought I thought it was incredible. Um, he he really breaks it down in a great way. So, okay. I don't know where the heck. Uh, Okay, so blistering heights of stupidity. How you doing, my sister? Nice to see you. Karma and sinner, hot Chinese noodles. A red hot poster can make one hungry. <laughs> uh, Jimmy says, "Who needs a rule book to tell uh, tell you how to live your life, your incarnation? You should know from your heart the difference between right and wrong." Exactly. That's that's exactly what I was saying. You should know right from wrong in your heart. You know what you know how you should be treating people. You know how you should be living your life in general, and and just being a decent person. What the hell happened to that? Um, PKOSB says, "Do you mean believing in them?" Uh, if you're asking me, I'm not sure what the I'm not sure what the question if the question was aimed at me or not I, I, you'll have to elaborate please blistering heart of stupidity 
I'll have paint thrown at me, laugh out loud. Enjoy so much that you lick the plate and leave no trace behind. <laughs> yes. Conscious Light Source, good to see you. I hope you're doing well tonight. We can control the world that is here. We don't have to wait to die. We can turn water into wine and raise people from the dead. We are Christ. We are sovereign. Yep. Christ is within. Christ is within. Jimmy Jank says, The Bible, the biggest selling fiction book of all time, the earliest known psyop known to man, question mark. I think you're on to something, my friend. I think uh, despite the... The Bible does tell truth. There's no doubt about it, but... Yeah, I mean, uh, there seems to be, uh, it probably is the earliest known psyop known to man. And boy, has it flourished, right? Uh, Blistering says, I can turn water into ice because my heart be cold. Oh. Um, Jabby Dodger says, I'm going to pass peacefully during this stream. Oh, Jabby, take me with you, my friend. Take me with you. I'm just so tired. I'm tired. You know, I'm not suicidal at all. I'm just tired. It's just like I've, I, like I know I've been here so many times. And it's just like, it, you know, it's just like I've had enough. I'm done. It's like an, another day, another day. Jimmy Jenks, I do not consent. Say it loud. Say it loud. We would draw all soul contracts. I do have another video uh, that made me think of another video I've had planned. I'm going to do a... I'm going to try to do it. This is something I've never done before, but I'm going to try to do an audio track about doing just that, with drawing consent, eliminating all soul, con soul contracts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know... Um, the disconnection from every, every agreement we've ever made related to this place. And uh, and, and it's going to be completely sovereignty driven. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but it's it's something I am passionate about, at least attempting. So, you know, sometime in the future, you'll see that. Blistering says, D-Rat, that's a great plan. Why not see the world out there for free? Um, PKOSB says, do you know what happens after you cross over? Um, you mean, uh, I'm assuming you mean when we're, when we declare our sovereignty, or if you're talking about, um, the earthly umbrella, I know a lot about that, but outside of here, I, I, I really can't say, I mean, you got to think of it this way. For those that have made it out, they've never come back to tell us, right? <laughs> that's, I mean, that's the harsh reality of it because had, there's no one that's come back who has declared their sovereignty and has a story to tell. If it's out there, I don't know it exists. And even then, how many could there be? That's why, like, with all the data that I, that I look at, there, you know, I look for patterns and things like that. I've never seen anything like that. I would, I would love to. I'd love to see something like that. We, we have tons of accounts of out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences, where they talk about all sorts of things. But to me, they're under the Earth umbrella of the, ast of the Earth's astral realms, so to say. And there's multiple ones. There's a lot of talk about a ring that is um, seen and experienced in um, the Earth's astral realm. You see it time and time again talked about. And we're likely somewhere in that ring. I, sus I suspect that. I, I, I don't know for sure, but I, I suspect we're somewhere in that ring. And we're just one little component of a much bigger system that's going out there. When it, when you look at the near-death experiences and um, particularly like the pre-birth memories, and I and I've said this before, I had a hard time 
Pre-birth memories was the last of all the things I kind of started to look into. Um, only in the last few couple years, maybe two, three years, that I start looking at them because I have an issue with someone going to a hypnotist. I have, you know, the power of suggestion is there, things like that. But then you start to see, like in near-death experiences, you start to see how the same freaking patterns show up time and time again. And again, and again, you cannot say that thousands and thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people are lying. Where is the motivation? How many of those tens of thousands are hawking books and, uh, you know, and this and that, you know, retreats and, and uh, contact in the desert and, you know, all that type of shit. You know, how many of those are out there? Not many. It's a small percentage compared to how many stories there are. If you go and you start looking at, you know, you can pick the subject. Near-death experience, shared death experience, pre-birth memories. Um, you just go down the list. You pick the topic and how it relates to the matrix reincarnation soul trap. And you will see hundreds of stories of just random people in the comment section. Tons of them. What do they have to gain? And that's not even including the ones that are documented on websites. We're talking about just YouTube comment sections alone. There's tons of them. They're all not lying. They're all not lying. And you start to see the data patterns. That's what gives it away. Just saying. I know I kind of went off on a little bit on that one. But um, Desert Rat says, see the world. Exactly. Jabby Dodger says, I believe we are energy and never die. Nothing else. Yep, I'm with you on that one. I completely agree with that. Blistering says, PK, I do. Names and belongings get struck out and no one will care, which I is perfect for me. Okay. I, I guess that was a response. I apologize for not giving that context. Conscious Light Source the biggest misinterpretation lie of the Gospels is the they killed Christ. They didn't kill Christ. Christ is sovereign. The only power you have is that which my Father, I and ye, gives you. I love that. Love that. You're right on it. Blistering says, world's pure. I stand corrected. Desert Rat says, you don't have to see more than one. By the way, uh, Rat, nice to see you, brother. Hope you're doing well tonight, man. I got that computer I'm working on for you. I, I had to, I formatted the drive, just so you know. And I'm reinstalling Windows on it for you. It's going to be a little bit longer, but I, I got it for you. I'm going to install some stuff for you and make sure you're set up. Blistering says, Christ is just a fine character for picture memes. <laughs> Desert Rat says, quote, Buddy Christ, end quote, by George Carlin. God, Carlin was so spot on, right? He said so many, so many truths. Where the hell is a Carlin in today's age, right? Where is he? Jimmy Jank says, I always thought that if I was learning something, I'd remember the past lessons. Laugh out loud. Yeah, yeah, that's a good joke, right? Yeah, I mean, the whole thing that um, we're supposed to be learning from our lessons you know, it's a school. It's a school. It's a learning experience. So it's, it's, you know, you're supposed to learn. What are we learning from? How are we going to learn from our mistakes if we're, our minds are wiped and we come in here ignorant at birth? What are you learning? How are you supposed to, to fix your, your past misdeeds? Blah, blah, blah. It's such a God, the scam going on here is just so crazy, isn't it? So crazy. Desert Rat says you're guilty until declared innocent. Yep, that's today's society. Been that way for a while, too. Blister says, I think my abstract mind coupled will with my humor will be presented with a Willy Wonka golden ticket to hell. <laughs> that's so funny. I actually watched that movie the other night. It was just... Going back to my childhood and I put it on. I love that movie. One of my favorites. Rat says, or a strange version of heaven. 51 Project. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well tonight. I is a collection of experiences gained here. 
I am not I. I like that. I like that one a lot. Thanks for sharing that. Blistering says, after we die, let's all meet at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory and dive into molten chocolate and chit-chat around Candyland for a bit. I'm down for that, but <laughs> but that's an illusion, right? And I think the illusions come with here. But then we are, then again, we are creator beings, right? So we can create our own damn chocolate factory. No archons allowed. Okay. Conscious Light says, uh, Christ means any being that comes to the enlightenment of their sovereign nature. Having to, quote, wait till death restricts your sovereignty. You don't have to wait. You are all powerful already. Love it. Love it. Well, well said. Blistering says, strange heaven. Love that idea. How strange. Jimmy Jank says, it's like the kink song. Do it again. <laughs> yes. Blister says, I want to find the game controllers and joysticks and shove it up the ultimate big one. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm with you, with you completely. Blistering says, the word sovereign makes me think of an orange each time. Oh. Silencio, uh, quote, I want to believe, end quote. Nay, I want to only leave. I'm with you, I'm with you. Um, by the way, Silencio, I saw your comments went to, I'm pretty sure it's you, your comments, two of your comments went to my spam folder and I have no idea why because all comments are auto, should automatically go through, but for some reason it seemed like two of yours just went to the spam folder which hasn't happened in months but for some reason youtube's picking on you all right joyce r us hello nice to see you who wrote this book all right so this is a book by sir ronald r Fellian. i'll show it right here this is his book you can find it uh I think I got mine on eBay or Amazon. I don't remember. You can find it. It's a. You'll be able to. You'll be able to easily get it. Um, Blistering says, "Joyce, are you serious? Which book? Willy Wonka." Uh, Rat says, "Willy Wonka, Heaven Sounds Gold." Yes, it does. I'm with you. Blistering says, "Soupy Soul Noodles from Communist China." <laughs> Desert Rat. There it is. The Energy Parasites. Yep. Yep. Well, that's that's the whole construct right cheers I think it's uh, you know the whole energy parasite thing oh, it's just so sick to think about right and the other thing that really gets me my wheels turning is um, you know we're 80% we're I think it's 80% or 90% water and I don't have the book with me. Amoto, Dr. Amoto, who did the work on uh, water having memory. Think about it. If you're going to make a being and you know that you can program water and you know that water can react happy, sad, and show a composition in the physical. Think about the shit that we consume or we used to consume, right? I hope none of you are out there watching the news. I hope none of you are out there consuming overly negative shit because that changes the composition of our body, right? Water has a memory. We're 80 to 90% water. Water can uh, manipulate itself and cont you know contains memory. And in turn, that messes us up. Think about that, right? It only makes sense that you would make a body like this that's flawed beyond belief 
you'd pump it with 80% water, you'd feed it and, and, and just inundate it with negativity. And as a result, the rest of the body is going to go along for the ride, right? Just throwing that out there, something to think about. Check out Dr. Emoto if you don't know who I'm talking about. He, I think he's passed away since, but um, he's got some books. I have one of them in my uh, closet, but I should have brought it out. I wasn't really expecting to talk about it. I just thought about it on a whim. So uh, check him out if you don't, because it's it's proven. It's not it's not a woo woo bullshit. It's proven. All right. So where were we? Uh, Blistering says, FC, your poster tonight makes me crave for some good Chinese food. Sai. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what kind of Chinese food? I always think of, uh, with Chinese food, I think of um, my cousin Vinny with uh, Marissa Tomei getting out of the car. She's got the, the little, I think it's like a Barbie camera, and she's like, she takes a picture. I bet the Chinese food here is terrible. Love that movie. If you guys haven't seen it, you gotta see it. My Cousin Vinny. It's with Joe Pesci and Marissa Tomei. Also the guy who played um, Herman Munster as the judge. He's awesome. It's a hell of a movie. All right. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Jenks says, Desert Rat. Not if you, it's got little bitches like Veruca Salt though <laughs> it's just so funny having this like little synchronicity with you guys with Willy Wonka because I just watched it last night and we were just talking about it this morning like actually a couple hours ago not even less than that um the 51 project I quote highly recommend after this you listen to Jerry Marzinski on the James Dillinger poll channel he is Prison therapist, 40 years working with schizophrenic. He discovered the voices are real. Yeah, actually, I've interviewed Jerry twice. Or three times. Yeah, twice. If you check out my playlist or if you scroll down my videos, I've had uh, very in-depth discussions with him. And um, so you can even check out what he says here. Jerry's a good, good man. Um... He's doing incredible work, and and for the poor schizophrenic people out there who have just been served such an incredible injustice, he is, God bless him, whatever God is, right? <laughs> Source. As long as you're not looking for God when you leave here right away, you got to do what you got to do. It's like I like, you know, God bless. You know, he's he's such a good man. He's he's the 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 ah uh, anyone who has issues with schizophrenia or even who needs a a look at the world on how um I think everyone at some point has been attacked by negative entities to some degree at some point in their life probably multiple times in their lives. He puts it all into perspective. He really does. And um, if you, again, if you scroll down my list, it's uh, you can't miss it. Jerry Marzinski, I think it's been at least eight months to a year since I, we last uh, did an interview, but there's two really, really long ones there. Feel free to check them out. And feel free to check out... Uh, um, what 51 project would recommend the channel there I, i'm not familiar with it so i can't recommend the channel specifically but i recommend jerry all the way he's an excellent man blistering says i love the sarcastic tone from sc <laughs> thank you pkosb says more like an excuse yeah humanity loves to make excuses loves it make excuses for our captors all the time right Desert Rat, I believe he's had Jerry on the channel. Yep, yep, yep. Blistering says, voices, you know, even psychopaths will tell you about voices and not feeling like themselves. Heard this firsthand, firsthand for myself from at least two I know of. 
Yep, that makes sense. I I completely think that um, outside forces can influence someone in horribly negative ways, even if it's just um, situational from time to time. There's no doubt in my mind that that occurs. 51 Project says, oh, wow, I listened to Jerry the other day. Fascinating. Yeah, Jerry's Jerry's a really good man. Uh, Joy says, I call it the big carrot at the end of our life. BS. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Little, little dangling carrot on the stick, right? Yeah. Uh, Desert Rat says, the college you never graduate from, but the debt is real. <laughs> Love it. Yep. Blistering says, FC, you can have a fun career doing voice acting. Well, that would be interesting. I don't think I don't think I have a big range of voices though, and I really don't want to. I really don't want to work much. Kind of just I hate work. Although it would maybe be fun, like if there was some animation or something, I might be down for something like that. It'd be fun. Once in a while thing. <laughs> you know who is uh, interesting was um, the guy who did. Um, I think Mel. Blanc or Blank was his name. The, they called him the Man of a Thousand Voices. He did all the old Looney Tunes uh, characters. Incredible. That guy was nuts. The stuff that he was able to do. Conscious Light Source. We are the ones that created this Earth matrix. The only matrix that exists is that which we allow to exist. We are all powerful. We can change the matrix whenever we want and turn water into wine. Yeah, I I think all of that is possible. I think um, that if humanity tomorrow had a huge down, excuse me, a huge download come in in a mass wave, and it just flicked on a switch, that yes, things could change. But and say, this is I'm not going to go too far into this because I'm going to do a whole video on it. But um, I think the controllers upstairs, if they saw that happening, they would hit the reset button. And that's what I think a lot of the resets are. about. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for a future video on that. That's that's actually coming relatively soon. I've been. I'm almost done with the outline on that. So, um, Blistering says, I can do some neat bird and animal voice impressions myself. Well, you have to share that with me on uh, Zoom sometime when we talk again. PKOSB says, they can come up with anything. The longer you live, the worse. Hope I can remember all of this, Dan, and thank you. You're welcome. Very happy to have anyone who even just is just popping into this this type of uh, content. It may, you know, it, I want anyone who is remotely interested just to give it a shot and listen. And then you got to go and look for yourself. The answers are there. That's the most important thing, guys. Is uh, the answers are there. They're they're in your face. You just got to put in the time. They're, they're, everything's there. The whole, this whole thing is an illusion and the whole thing is a deception. Everything, and I mean everything, is rooted in getting you back here in a body. The entire, this entire existence. That's the entire point of it. That's why things are so messed up is because it's about feeding off negative energy and getting you back in a body after you die as quickly as possible. That's the whole point of this existence. I know it sounds pathetic, but that's really that's really the bottom line when you when you chalk it all down, you know. Wish it wasn't that way, but I'm sorry. That is that's what it is. The 51 Project says this place is pretty hell like as it is. If I murder someone, I go to prison. Give me a uniform and a gun, or a jet, or a drone, and I murder 120. I get a medal. Yes. <laughs> Oh, God, the irony there, right? Okay, Blistering says, The problem is we 
are often wronged and taken advantage of. So tall claims of karma and its existence makes us wish some god will avenge us for being wrong. Wrong. Everyone gets away. It's a setup. Boom. Silencio says, It sounds like the afterlife life review won't work on psychopaths. Oh, it, it, um, I, I don't, I think it will work just fine because they, they give them both. And I think a lot of the psychopaths enjoy a material existence. That's, I really do. I think, um, they get their rocks off, like, on, 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 you know, messing with people. So if you get your rocks off on messing with people or torturing or whatever the heck you're doing, chances are you're going to want to come back here. And they'll be like, oh, okay. You know, boom, you're next. It doesn't matter what the case is. I don't, I don't think it matters what the personality types. Actually, a psychopath would be a good candidate for um, a future, you know, a leader down here. You know, a president, a congressman, a senator. Uh, head of a corporation, that type of thing. So they might get lured in with, uh, you know, a future wealthy materialistic existence in their next life. They'll figure out something. But they're sure as hell not going to figure out that they're in a trap. At least I don't think so. I think it would be very rare. But if they did, the sick thing is, is like, you know, you hope that like you would it's such a screwed up way to think but you would hope that someone with that personality type would end up back here so they're not out amongst those of us who want to be sovereign but at the same time is that really their true state right think about it because this existence, we come with this attachment when we come down here that kind of splits part of our personality, like, um, in a way. Not like a DID thing, but a, but like you, you know, you have that inner voice, right? You have the soul and you have the spirit. And I think part of the soul and the spirit is here. A small portion of it and then the rest of it is sitting somewhere up in the ether uh, you know contained and we don't have access to it so who's to say that a psychopath I see like it's such a rough conversation right it's like I'm trying to make sense of something that like is very hard to make sense of like, first off, would a psychopath even be a real being? Or would they just be like an NPC being? I mean, if that's the case, if they're NPC, then whatever. We just throw them off to the side. Who cares? But if they have an actual real soul spirit, I mean, who knows, right? I mean, maybe they've been here so long that they're just totally fucked. Or, or, I know this might be hard to comprehend and even accept because it was something that I, it was hard for me to kind of, I mean, I don't even really necessarily accept it, but I kind of put up with it, is it seems that if you start to look at the pre-birth memories a lot, it seems like we kind of uh, we kind of pick our life script and we also are kind of there's outside forces that kind of aid us in that and then there's also variables that exist once you get down here where your life script can kind of you know go way off track and or there's, you know, different things that could pop in and change things. See, like, that's where I think there's a lot of fuckery going on, too. Because I think 
we can sit here and say, uh, okay, I want this type of life, blah, blah, blah. And um, you're kind of going to expect that coming down. And then when you get down here, it's like, whoa, you know, like uh, these things happen that you might not necessarily expect. And I'm talking from a pre-birth uh, memory uh, regression standpoint specifically because, you know, you'll hear these stories like, um, oh, there's another video. I, it would be a monster if I did it, but I really think it would be um, a hell of a video to to help to, to put out there for you guys to hear. Um, it's a book by Michael Newton, and he was, uh, he did, you know, a regression, past life and pre-birth, you know, regressions you know mainly past life things um but you know they limp the, the two are lumped in to agree too so he had there's a there's a, he has a few books out there he even has i think an institute out there you know he's since passed but he did a lot of work in this field and something that sticks out in my head is this i think it was a woman who she she was in his office and i'm totally paraphrasing here so mine you know just bear with me i'm not gonna tell it word for word i'm just gonna paraphrase it um this woman comes in for a regression and she she's on the couch blah blah, blah. he brings her back and she has a, a conflict where she she resolves her trauma to an extent in the current life she's living like today and, but she slips into a past lifetime. And the, th and the therapist is not really asking any leading questions, but asking to kind of further the story. That's Michael Newton. And he's saying to her, um, you know, she, she's going on and on and on about her, you know, some previous life where she was a girl, I think, in Boston or Massachusetts, somewhere, and um, she fell out of a carriage. I think she was she was in a well-to-do family, and that's what she wanted. She wanted to kind of have a life that was you know, where her parents would be able to kind of help her and then at the same time be, uh, you know, it's, uh... I apologize. <laughs> All right. I don't even know where the hell I was. I was with the story at the girl in Boston. I'm sorry, there's a few uh, drunk friends that came in. <laughs> Anyways, so I was telling the story about the the woman in Boston. I think, I'm pretty sure it was Boston. Anyway, she's sitting on the couch, blah, blah. She's going through her life, and uh, she is trying to resolve a trauma that she had in this lifetime. So she's working on regressing that and ends up, in the meantime, popping into a previous lifetime. And she ends up going back to a life where she was in Boston and uh, part of her quote life script was that she was going to fall out of a carriage okay and injure herself because part of her plan how sick is this is that part of her learning experience I swear to God this is what's going on she's saying that she wanted to basically be disabled and confined to a wheelchair or she couldn't walk basically so that she can you know learn and process more and <laughs> that's how sick and twisted it is but what the therapist kind of alludes and again i'm paraphrasing the therapist is saying okay well did you really want this and she's kind of hesitant because of how the suffering was like she said that 
for six weeks after I think it was or eight weeks after that she didn't want to um, you know that she thought about killing herself that she didn't want to live that the pain was ridiculously uh, excruciating blah 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 and so then the therapist says is this a choice that you made And she says, yes, but she, but then he asks, was this a choice that you wanted to, con, you know, in that moment, did you want it to happen or did this being, which it was, there was some sort of force and, and it was being alluded to that it was the soul, the soul aided in pushing her outside the carriage and injuring herself. And, and she was, there was like some weird hesitation in there. I mean, it was a really, really weird past life regression. And, um, there's a good chance, like I said, that I, I'm actually thinking about doing a commentary on the whole seven hours of the book, maybe in like an hour, hour segments over the course of, you know, seven, eight, nine weeks. Um, for those listening, if that's something you're interested in, just leave a comment in the comment section. Um, I was going to maybe do a poll in the community tab and see if people were even interested in that, because I think, I think the book's really interesting. I just don't agree at all with Newton's, um, view of what this is all about, but it's, you know, this whole matrix reincarnation soul trap is not necessarily easy to see especially even i mean i think some ther some past life regression therapists nde therapists blah 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 i think some of them can easily see it i think some of the big guns in, in near-death experience research know but they're not saying it and i had talked about how raymond moody himself at the end of an interview, you can check it out for yourself. I think it was posted, um, I don't know if it was like a few, like six months or a few years ago, something like that. I ran across it about, I think, six months ago. And it's on Gaia, which, warning, Gaia is filled with bullshit. You know, Gaia TV. You can find it on YouTube. It's free. It's about... Um, reincarnation and or near-death experiences i'm sorry or maybe it was both near-death experiences and reincarnation he, and at the end of the very very end the last i don't know couple minutes so you don't even need to watch the whole thing although it's very good i'm gonna say that they did a great job they asked him a lot of good questions and you know i i love moody's work i think he's a hell of a researcher and he, he in my book he's one of the best out there. So at the end of the interview, he says, and when you finish your sentence, there is an afterlife or something like that. But he uses, you know, when you finish your sentence, referring to it as a prison. That's how I took it. And that's how, you know, it's just kind of obvious, right? So... I just found that interesting. I don't know. I, I, I know I mentioned that one other time on the channel, but it's it's worth repeating, right? You have Raymond Moody, one of the top near-death experiencer, shared-death experiencer researchers on the planet, took over um, after Ian Stevenson died at the University of Virginia Division of Perceptual Studies and um, has done nothing but looked at everything and anything. I mean, if I could, if honestly, if I could put my footsteps in a career it, in this lifetime, it would be his because he's just, he's incredible. And I, and I am trying to get him on the show, but I'm just going to say this. A lot of people don't like our type. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Even though I think Moody knows, um, there's some, there's, I don't think something like this is, is 
is really allowed to be said in public by a figure like him. So and you know what makes it even weirder and um there's a um I think it's an Ian's Ian's um video that he did that came out I don't know maybe about 7 years ago. And um he's in the middle of talking. It's about an hour you can even find it in the comment section. It, if one of you remind me in the comments section after the video is over to post the video link of the one I'm specifically talking about, I think it was about shared death experiences, but it was an IANS conference. And in about an hour and one minutes, hour and three minutes in, the he starts talking about for a minute, minute and a half about something about the CIA and um, saying that he didn't, it didn't seem like it was a problem for him to talk about this. And um, because the CIA, he says the CIA didn't seem to care. And it's really hilarious because then the video cuts off and picks off picks up i don't know how many minutes later no one knows because the video is cut off and if you look at the comment sections um of that video there's got to be about six seven eight people asking about it and there was something there i don't know what the hell he said um but i've always thought that people in these fields who are allowed to who are allowed to you know sell lots of books blah 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 and um and get to i mean he's really the top in the field right i mean he's really he's he's big i mean you have um grayson too i mean you know you have there's a lot of big names out in the field but i think when someone like him exposes a deep truth that like the matrix reincarnation soul trap assume you know i'm not saying he did but i think he's aware of it based on just some a few things that he said it makes you wonder um yeah i do know that um moody does charge um he charges 300 dollars for a one-on-one -on -one. I have considered um, paying that. I have. And doing a one-on-one -on -one and asking him a lot of the questions that I would love to ask him. Um, see, it's kind of weird when I kind of go down this road, but um, I've never, I haven't even monetized this channel yet. I've never asked for a, a penny here. And I feel really weird about it because I am, part of me thinks that, you know, well, actually all of me thinks that all this information should be free. No, you know, no, there, there, you know, even if I were to set up a Patreon at some point, which I haven't done yet or anything, you know, I haven't asked for a penny on this channel. Um, I think even that, like, I, I don't even like the idea of giving people, if they had, if I had a Patreon special content over, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's me, you know, blowing my nose out on the camera. I, I just don't feel that, um, any information at all should be available to a certain group, set of people who are paying money over another. I think all information should be free. I think all knowledge, everything should be available for free. Um, but I'm going to throw this out there. And if, you know, if there's enough interest, um, I would like to speak with Raymond Moody. And he does charge $300. You can usually book something with him within about two to three weeks. I think he does it on Wednesdays, you know, 
about eight, seven, eight hours through the day. You can pick an hour to talk with them. But um, if anyone is interested in maybe contributing towards that $300 for me to ask him some of these questions, just let me know. I'm not saying the whole $300, but even if just, just some of it, that would be cool. Um, and that's it. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And if there's enough interested, um, I'll ask him the big question. <laughs> Um, or I might just plop down the money myself anyways, because I really want to talk to him. So I think it'll happen regardless at some point. Um, but whether I can put that out there, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he has certain agreements that come along with talking to him. I have no clue. Heck, even if like I put up, um, half of it, like, um, and even if you guys had questions, like I would ask them too. We can even do something like that where like I put up, if it's 300, I put up 150 and then you guys put up um, the 150 and then you're able to ask you ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the Moody thing, um, you know, think about it. if you guys leave a comment after the stream and it's interesting and you're interested, let me know no pressure no anything you know just throwing it out there hi melissa west nice to see you sister i hope you're doing well tonight glad to have you with us as always and melissa has um a soap business feel free to check out her channel uh support our fellow friends here at the channel anna says uh i shared a link to a possible uh, shill agent channel that I thought you would be interested to check out on your how to detect agents of the matrix it was a great video I learned a lot um, thank you I'm happy it helped you um, I don't remember getting that so I'll have to go and look but thank you I appreciate that um, Desert Rat says the water is the backdoor program it can be hacked by anything. Yes, yes. The water has the memory. It's in our bodies. It's everywhere. Um, God, even think about like, um, I know this is far out there, but it's it's a possibility that this happens where, you know, we have rainstorms and uh, all that memory inside the water above us is raining down something. It doesn't necessarily have to always be negative. It could be positive, too. But uh, knowing this world, wouldn't it be, um, you know, a, a more of a, ne you know, like you would assume it to be negative, right? <laughs> just by, uh, but who knows? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, Eli, nice to see you, brother. Hope you're doing well. Late, late, late. That's all right. Better late than never, right, man? You could always watch the replay, too. Um, okay, PKOSB says, What channels do you suggest on sound vibration? Um, leave a comment with me after the stream. Uh, wait a few minutes, because sometimes the, the comment section doesn't appear right away. I'd have to go into some of my playlists. I can't think of um, any offhand, but... Um, uh, there are a few that I have bookmarked. Uh, North Coast Jess says, There are frequencies that we can't hear constantly beaming hellish soundscapes. I've caught it glitching when I was falling asleep and heard it. It comes from your electronic devices, but it's all around. That doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I think that definitely is probably happening. Um... I mean, I shut off my phone every night. I disconnect um, the Wi-Fi. You know, I try to disconnect everything. But then I was, it's kind of funny because I was scanning. I don't remember. I think I had a new device or something a few months ago. Excuse me. And I was scanning the area for my, for, you know, for my home Wi-Fi. And then I'm finding out, you know, like multiple neighbors in the neighborhood have freaking dishwasher Wi-Fi refrigerator Wi-Fi. It's like, why the hell do you have that? Who the hell needs Wi-Fi with a dishwasher and a freaking uh, um, refrigerator? It's absurd. Okay. 
Bloodstream says, the Chinese food from Dude Where's My Car is funny too. And then, yeah, that's a good movie. I haven't seen that in a while. Eli says, uh, North Coast Stress, these frequencies line up with weather manipulations. Doesn't surprise me at all. North Coast Stress, probably it may be coming from Harp. It's possible. Blissing says, I watched the Truman Show properly a night ago. God, the Truman Show. Talk about truth bombs all up in your face, right? All up in your face. Incredible movie. Um... It's so weird about the Truman Show, too, is I remember seeing it in theaters when I was in high school. And uh, I think it was high school, yeah, or shortly thereafter. And um, I just remember being like, wow, this movie, like, you know, it's some, some big truth in this. You know, and I, I don't know. I didn't know anything that I knew now that I knew back then. And I mean nothing. Um at that point, the only few things that, you know, I was, I looked into, you know, and this rooted back to even before high school was the stupid, uh, you know, like aliens and UFOs and JFK. That was it, you know, but yeah, it's, um, yep. I mean, it's, I feel like I've come full circle with that movie and the Truman Show really is, um, it's incredible how, how how it feels like that's exactly what we're in, right? That's all right. This is our last time, right, guys? We're done. No more. No more. Jimmy Jenks, that song, What If God Was One of Us, Just a Stranger on the Bus, On Their Way Home. Yep, the truth bomb, right? That was another song that came out when I was, I think I was in middle school when that song came out. North Coast Jess, yep, they are darker than dark smoke that wraps around you, causing fear and sucking energy. I encounter one in a dream. Yeah, a lot of people encounter things like that in a dream or, you know, sleep paralysis, um, especially when we're children. That's a big one. Um, Eli, that's a classic one. We live so they don't have to. Yep. PKOSB P K O S B says this place could be good for everyone. I can love it here, but I can't ignore all the suffering, knowing it's on purpose. Why be here when you're only going to be a slave and never change it? Yeah, um, that's yeah. I've had um, conversations with my close friend Mickle about this, and uh, others. I feel the same way. Um, there are, there, I mean, there's like, we have micro injustices and then we have macro. I mean, we have the whole wide range of ridiculous injustices going on here and nothing ever changes. Nothing. And nothing, I mean, if you look at the historic record that we have access to as far back as you can go, nothing has changed. And nothing will change because that's how this reality is designed. It's not me being Mr. Negative. It's just calling out the truth for what it is. Like, see, that's the thing, like, um, like I brought up in the past, and I'm, I'll do a separate video on this one, too, um, about how Stockholm Syndrome, you know, humanity is the biggest stock, case of Stockholm Syndrome you've ever seen. And that's the truth because... All we do throughout life is make excuses for all the insanity, all the all the fuckery. I mean, I think um, if I recall correctly, like one one of these big billionaires could wipe out, um, you know, poverty across the world in one false swoop. Meanwhile, they create, um, you know, these foundations that feedback right into their pockets. They're not even doing shit. Even though they, they want the public to, you know, they want to be perceived as doing something good. So, I mean, you know, we, we've been through this whole thing, oh, you know, so many times, and it's not even worth discussing because we all know what the hell is going on. But, yeah, it is it is what it is. Um, this place could be good. It could be, like I said, it, like I said in the past, it, it could be a really fun experience to 
go with if um, there wasn't such misery. Like, and if we had the ability to come and go as we pleased. If we wanted to leave, like right now, I should have the option to leave. You should have the option to leave. We all should have the option to leave. When and if we want. And if we wanted to come back and experience it, sure. Maybe in a different body, maybe in, you know, maybe in the form of an animal, whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is, is if we wanted to come and experience this, we should have the option at any given moment to leave. But we don't. So free will's bullshit. Yeah. Anyways, um... Anne says, this is some scary stuff. I fear worse body, worse situation, and worse family. I'm sorry. My heart goes out to you, Anne. Hang in there, sister. A poor church moon key. The 1% definitely are materialistic and psychopathic. Yep. All right. I think I'm probably going to have to... Um, yeah, Anne says this place is a mind, mind fuck. Yeah. Um, Blistering says yes. Unfortunately, many psychopaths were also, if they had souls, example, hijacked by entities long ago, or their frontal cortex was damaged by some big injury when they were kids. That shock ruins them. Yeah. See, like, there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, and you know, I think. Um, there's it, as much as I would like to sit here. I mean, look, we can judge them for what they are now. Right. Um, and that's completely fine. But we have no clue. What's happened to them beforehand. Um, and I would say there's a good chance that most psychopaths. Um, Narcissists, things like that. Um, thrive off a realm like this right they probably like it here those those are the characters that are perfectly fit to be the overlords here the politicians the you know the the um corporate ceos the president the congressman the senate you know um the real estate tycoons all that type of stuff um but what happens when they die? You know what I'm saying? Like, do they have a coming to themselves moment? Probably not. Maybe briefly, but probably not. Because the Matrix knows that that type of person is an asset. I think there comes a point when you reincarnate or incarnate here so many times that you we lose ourselves. You know what I'm saying? I, I think, I think, I don't even, I, I know I've been here many times. I don't know how many times. And frankly, when I find out, I'm my, you know, my, uh, etheric jaw is going to drop to the floor <laughs> with how many times I've been here. But whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. But I feel most of us here, I think, I know I'm saying I think, I think, I think. Because that's, you know, I don't know. But I think most of us, even in this chat room, you know, in this, you know, us together right now. Um, I think all of us have been here for a while. And we've been fucked with and prodded and fucked with again and fucked with again. Over and over and over. And now is our time to reclaim our sovereignty and it's so important that we're this is something we really need i i can't stress this enough because you know and i am not trying to scare the shit out of anyone but for me personally i guess it depends on each and every one of you how you want to handle this but i think this is something you should be thinking about almost every day um and sending it out into the universe you know, sending it out through meditation or what have you. Um, and just, you don't have to think about it all day, but just invest a little time every day to throw it out there. So 
just so that um ah, i'm not gonna bring that up right now i don't think it's the time but um i let me just say this i think we have a short window when we cross over um that's the part that kind of frightens me a little bit i know i'm gonna get out of here I, you have to you have to know inside you that you're gonna get out of here um and it all it is all based on consent all of it but like i said they roll out the red carpet of bullshit and god knows what so um disconnecting yourself um as much as possible is really important um but you know keep an eye out again for my future video on how to exit the reincarnation soul trap matrix that will be it um so i think yeah i um yeah i'm just scrolling i mean i i don't have time to go through the whole chat i'm going to go through the last few paragraphs so if any of you want to pop something in really quick now i mean i'm sorry i i just there's a lot there I, I appreciate everyone talking but if there's anything really important you want to say right now that you feel needs to be said or talked about between us uh just pop it up really quick and then I'm probably going to close it out in about five minutes okay guys um and says it's impossible to be well adjusted in sick and twisted reality where we live complete inversion of how we should yeah it is it is it's it's it is impossible to to live that way um i like the term fake it till you make it um because that's kind of how um it's kind of how i do it just being honest i fake it till i make it Uh, four buzz uh, four buzz truth hey how you doing man uh, I want to have you back but I got my second strike oh man I'm sorry to hear that uh, my best suggestion would be to um, private all your videos it's the only thing I could think of bro uh, and person says hey man come and go as we please yeah exactly that's what we should have access to right jimmy jank says them little quirks and synchronicities are not lost on me you just happen to look out the window as that specific person is walking past yeah yep yep how convenient right pkosb says my name is paula i made this years ago just to let you know and it's not negative it's true and truth don't care about your feelings yes exactly that's 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 the you know that just is what it is um there is there is no um weaving in and out of people's feelings with this material you're gonna you're gonna pick up people who maybe have just heard about it a little bit then you're gonna pick up people who know damn well it's happening and then you're gonna pick up outside people who like you know you got the new age and the religious types um <clears throat> excuse me and you know they're gonna be like oh well this is negative this is negative well again truth doesn't hurt about, if you care about your feelings like pkosb said it doesn't doesn't matter this is what's happening do you want to get the hell out of here or you don't that's the bottom line if you if, like i've said to people in the past if you like it here go for it have fun no one's stopping you no one's forcing you to watch these videos either so it's just you just live your life do what you got to do some people like it here I, I don't get it i just i don't get it i don't i don't i mean i just don't i mean it's it's a clown show 24 7 and it's just turned so lame right like i was saying um i was talking to someone earlier today Oh, yeah, I was talking in my buddy Lee's uh, Discord. And I was saying how, wouldn't it be cool if we had the fake alien invasion 
instead of stupid COVID, at least we could, you know, like I'd be on my on my backyard setting up the lawn chair, watching all the neighbor, the whole neighborhood freak out while the stupid UFOs and the fake aliens were coming down and laughing my ass off. See, that would be cool. At least, like, okay, yeah, I live in a matrix, but at least I'd have the, you know, we'd have some bullshit fake alien invasion going on at the same time. No, we get stupid COVID. That no, that's what that's the that's what they decided to pull out of their their bag of tricks. <laughs> Come on. Uh, and says raped, abused, torment, used, and on and on. Yep. It's a bittersweet symphony. Yep. Tony says, I feel like I've been here possible thousands of times. Yeah, Tony, I I, I kind of feel the same. But I, I, as of now, I only have recollection of um, three. But I'm doing... It took me a while to really go with the past life uh, regression and actually commit to it, but I'm going to do it. Um I have someone in mind that I'm going to use and I'm going to go to them locally and, and do it. And I, and I, and I think everyone here should look into that. Um, but do your homework. Don't just pick anyone. Um, you know, talk to them on the phone a little bit, get a feel for them before you even go to the office. It's not, it's not overly expensive, but it's not cheap. And, um, uh, I do plan when I'm going to get it professionally done to also videotape it. And I'm probably going to share it on the channel. Um, so I know I've said in this video alone about four or five or six videos I plan on doing, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, if I share the video or just the audio, I don't know. It depends how personal it all gets and and how I feel about the whole thing because it is a really personal thing but I think it's something that um, if I get done and you get done that I think it's something that we should really share I think it could help um, answer a lot of questions for us um, and it's like part of me wants to really really know and then part of me doesn't want to know because you get the sense when you listen to these um, past life regressions that there's a lot of there's a lot of weird shit going on and um, you know you, you might not like what you what you reveal about your previous self who knows what you did I mean, maybe, I mean, maybe it's all positive and this and that. I guess it depends how many lifetimes you can re reveal about yourself. But um, I think it's, uh, it's something we can do now. And I think it's, we have access to it. We can tap into it, but we do need an aid in that. Um, I'll do an, I'll do another video. Um on past life regression too there's again i know i'm saying i'm going to do this this and that and i'm not the most timely person with doing videos but um, i do keep a log of ones that i know i want to do and i think past life regressions brothers and sisters i really think it would benefit all of you to look up somebody to do it for you um to help you in this um you can even do them online but i think doing them locally with someone is probably a better decision but you don't have to um, just throwing that out there so think it over I think we can learn a lot no matter how dark it may get okay Ann says we should never be in this mess in the first place I agree I agree um, the fact there hasn't been intervention on humanity's um, behalf is just um, uncomprehensible to me. Um, what are you going to do? 
It's just sad because I think humanity at its core is very good. You know, you have empathy, compassion, and love. Those are all beautiful traits. Like if we if we were in a world where that was the norm and there weren't these outside forces messing with our perception morning, noon, and night, we um, would probably enjoy this experience, you know? But that's not the way it is. And that's not the way it will be. But I, I, it amazes me that something, to some extent, even if it was in some... I don't, I don't know how something can't come and interrupt. I, I guess they've got this force field around here that is just impenetrable. And uh, you have to agree to come in and have this experience. That's a big part. So how many out there are necessarily going to want to risk their sovereignty to attempt to save something that is on the, under the umbrella of a system that is well-oiled and running like a glove, right? <laughs> so think of it that way. Uh, PK says, I know nothing about my past lives, but I can feel others' pain. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I feel others' pain too. It's, um, yeah, um, I, I've always... That's why, like, um, that's how I kind of got sucked into the the New Age thing for a brief, brief time in my life because um, I relate with the past of an empath, you know, that type of thing. Um, I feel the same way. Like, I can kind of feel energy and um, emotions, and it's always kind of dragged me down um, just because of the state of the world and it kind of just peels off but then it can also um, embrace and enjoy and uh, appreciate when there's love and compassion and empathy coming off of a human being it's it's a it's a mixed bag it really is but it's something um, that you know it can be a little bur burdensome at times that's all uh, and person says my soul is exhausted yeah that's um that's how I feel too. Uh, okay. PKS Space says, and I feel that way. Poor Church Monkey and Pearson, yeah. Reincarnation. Um thank you, Eli. I appreciate that what you just did. Um, PKOSB, yes, aliens would be exciting. I know it's fake. Yeah, exactly. How fun would it be, right? The fake alien invasion? I'd love that. <clears throat> Gamma Vapor says, hey, about to try meth for the first time. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Eli says, no placenta eating garbage, please. Yes, thank you. All right, we're just going to... All right, we're just going to take care of that. Trust the Eli's judgment. Okay. Jimmy says, Ann Pearson, keep right on to the end of the road. Old song sung by Birmingham City fans. Here in the UK, empath here too. I think I would imagine a lot of people um, in this chat are. PKOSB, I would like to see it if you choose to show it. Everything literally is a lie. Yep. Oh, you're talking about the um, past life regression thing. Yeah. No, I, th I, think, I think I definitely will. Um, I just don't know. You know, I think I think most of us here really should do that. I do. Um, it's not going to give us all the answers, but I think it'll give us some. And it'll kind of give us detailed answers into, you know, at least a life or two. 
maybe more. Um, and I think that kind of ex it can explain some of what's happening now. Like you can maybe see, excuse me, you can maybe see, you might be able to tap into something. You know what I'm saying? You might be able to make more sense of something if you have a small piece of the picture better in view. Okay. All right. Um, I did see um, the chat's gone by so fast that um, I have one on the screen and then I have my phone in front of me that I'm looking at. <clears throat> Excuse me, my, my voice is shot. I'm talking so much. Um, and the vape too. Smoking a little nuggy. Um, actually CBD tonight. But um, yeah, I think the whole past life thing is, is worth exploring. I know I'm repeating myself, but I seriously think it is. So if some of you have the means out there, um, look locally. And I can help. I, I can't drop the website at this moment. I, I have to go into my bookmarks and find it. But there are certain... Um, like schooling that has been done on this, like where it requires a certain amount of training before they can kind of go out in the field and be certified under this school. And I know some of you might say, oh, well, past life, this and that, you know, it can't be relied upon. Well, then don't do it. But those of you interested in it, I think there are certain ones that may fall under a category that are better worth exploring in your local area than not you know like even again if you just give them a call see what their fee is you know see how they work their process how long it is this and that um and make a judgment call see if you're comfortable with them i think being comfortable with these people is the most important it's first step and um take it from there so um again like uh, just leave a comment after the video if you want a, a link to some of the sources that you know i'm not saying they're going to be good or bad i'm just saying that i know they've been taught under a certain criteria before they are allowed to flaunt this certification it's not going to necessarily say anything here or there but at least it might give you a little more comfort and at least give them a call so yeah we'll leave it at that um i did see some of you were possibly interested in throwing a few bucks towards the moody thing i don't even have a paypal or a patreon or anything set up um if you just leave a comment um in a either this video or a future video that's cool and uh like i said i'll, I'll throw in at least 150 and if we can't reach it i'll just throw in the rest i don't care if you guys want it's no pressure i just think um speaking to him it's a it's a huge opportunity a, a man with a plethora of knowledge whether he will answer me directly or not is a whole nother story but um something tells me he wants to talk about this a little bit he's alluded to it at least in, in my opinion based on that one clip and a lot of other things he said but um yeah we'll see another person who i've reached out to that i really really hope will will decide to come on for an interview or open discussion is william ballman um i love that man i think he is um ah uh, the work he's done um him and the Monroe Institute, I owe them so much for helping me uh, advance in uh, how to look at my own consciousness and learning out-of-body experiences, lucid dreaming. Um, and I'm going to do, I know I said this again, I'm going to do another video um, on William Bullman's um, um uh you know end of life preparations 
because he and I line up very similar with how we're going to handle these things. And there's no doubt in my mind, Bowman knows what's going on here. He's beat around it in more ways than you can count, but he hasn't outright said it. So we'll see. Hopefully I can get him on too. I did. I even offered him. I offered him a few bucks too because I'd like. I don't mind. I don't mind paying people for their time. They, you know, everyone's got a life. You know, they they got to earn a living and get by. I just, you know, Moody's three hundred dollars. I don't know. Bowman will Bowman will just come on and, you know, we could just promote his books or um, his future lectures or his workshops. But um, a lot of people are cool with just that. But some people they. You know, Moody's in a whole nother realm. He's in demand by a lot of people. So, all right. Um, I think I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice <laughs> talking so long. Thank you, everybody, for stopping by. Um, I'm not going to name everyone, but, um, I've, you know, I went down the list. I hope you're all doing well tonight. And I appreciate all the interaction. The chat was awesome. You guys um, bouncing so many ideas off each other. And that's the sad thing about the comment section of these videos, right? Um, oh, God, I, used to, I learned so much off the comment sections in YouTube through the years. And what's going on now is just a shame. It really is. Um, it sucks. It sucks. Because you get little tips here and there from people. Oh, you know, check out this guy. Check out this girl, you know. Check out the, you know, check out this group, check out this website, you know, check out this book. And uh, you can't even, you know, you can't even, leave. I'm noticing people leaving YouTube links and they're not even showing up. And again, like I said earlier in a, the previous video I did, um, this account, my account is wide open. You should be able to leave a link. You should be able to say as whatever you want. You could sweat, you should be able to swear this and that, but. No, I mean, I see comments getting deleted and missing uh, multiple times a day. You guys are leaving comments and I see just the portion of the message pop up and then boom. So, all right, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to leave it at that. Much love and blessings to you all. Uh, this went way longer than I thought, but I had fun. I hope you guys did too. And uh, I will see you soon. So you all have a good night. Blessings, love, and don't worry, we're going to make it out of here just fine.